Them's fighting words there, Dave. You want a piece of me? No, Ted, how about just peace instead? Let's discuss the cleric domain of peace from Tasha's Cauldron to everything. I'm Nerdarchist Ted. I'm Nerdarchist Dave. Welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. Now let us make peace with this cleric subclass. So the balm of peace thrives at the heart of healthy communities between friendly nations and in the souls of the kind hearted. The gods of peace inspire people of all sorts to resolve conflict and to stand up against those forces that try to prevent peace from flourishing. See the Peace Deities table for a list of some of the gods associated with the domain. Clerics of the Peace Domain preside over the signing of treaties and are often asked to arbitrate in disputes. These clerics' blessings draw people together and help them shoulder one another's burdens as the clerics' magic aids those who are driven to fight for the way of peace. So if you have harmony and peace deities in your world or with those aspects in their portfolio, obviously you're going to want to have a peace domain that your clerics can choose and and use in your game. So with Tasha's Closer to Everything, we actually have one. You know, I wonder, you know, is this something that's coming up in your games? How often are you guys using it? Um, you know, a good place to kind of track your homebrew deities if you're not playing in a pre-written campaign would be something like Campfire Technologies, the sponsor of this video. It is a authoring and world building tool that helps you organize everything, keep it all in one place and add, so, add some law and order and peace to the disorganization that is Nerdarchy. Uh, you can build timelines over there, track your characters, add in places and maps. And there's also a free version that you can sign up for and check out to see if it's something that would be a useful t- tool for you in your games. Link in the description. So with that, you know, they've got a list of, you know, the given deities. Uh, you know, they, they've got Angaharad, which is the Elven Pantheon, and I'm probably butchering this. Uh, Baron Noor, True Silver from the Dwarven Pantheon, Boldre from Eberron, Seriolale from, from the Halfling Pantheon, Eldath from the Forgotten Realms, which uh, if you happen to follow me over to Mini Terrain Domain on Thursday nights, I am very familiar with uh, Eldath, who a former player, they followed them. Gerdal Iron Hand from the Gnomish, Paladin from Dragonlance, which you know, has a very popular name, and then Ral from Greyhawk. So you get this convenient table with some ideas, some thoughts of, you know, deities from, you know, basically D&D lore that you can use. And then you can like, and it'll maybe if you look at those, that'll give you an idea for other gods, whether you're using like real world mythology or something that you made up on your own. Let us know if you're using the Peace Domain, have you played it? How's it going in your game? Which deity are you worshiping? Share that with us in the Nerdarchy community down in the comments below. While you're down there, it would be really serene if you were to uh, go and hit those things that make YouTube happy. Like, share, subscribe, even attuning to that notification bell. Quick reminder, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we drop new Nerdarchy videos here on the channel. So come on back and check us out. So as with most uh, you know classes, we're going to see domain spells. So first level, they get Heroism and Sanctuary. Third level, Aid and Warding Bond. Fifth level is Beacon of Hope and Sending. Seventh level, Aura of Purity and Autoluke's Resilient Sphere. Ninth level is Greater Restoration and Rary's Telepathic Bond. This is a great spell selection. I'm loving it. Some of these spells are also spells that you may not necessarily always choose, but they're super sweet to just have on your spell list and not have to think about taking them or not. Like Sanctuary, you maybe you you don't normally take that spell, um, but I bet if you had access to it, you'd probably find all kinds of uses for it. You know, and, and we've seen an amazing use of sending throughout the Critical World campaign. So to not, not have to worry about ever preparing it, to just always have it at the ready, you know, is incredibly helpful. Oh, it's the end of the day. I'm going to send a spell, you know, I'm going to send a message and, you know, you just, you know, are able to communicate across, you know, the, the globe with people that you've interacted with or people that, you know, and, and be able to share status updates and what have you. It, it's incredible. Yeah. And then spells like aid are things that I love having. It came up in our game the other night. It was super clutch. Uh, as a cleric, when I'm a cleric, I usually take aid. I think it's one of the best spells in the game. Wording bond can be a lot of fun. You know, if you're you're, you're the cleric, you ha- you're kind of you know clerics tend to do okay as far as tankiness. Maybe you put your wording bond on the barbarian; they're taking half damage anyway, and then you're going to half it again. So now they're only taking quarter. You're taking a quarter. You can hang in the back and just keep healing yourself up. Not bad. 
So next up, we're going to get at first level still implement of peace. You gain proficiency in insight performance or persuasion skill your choice. So it's always good to get more skill choices. We also get emboldening bond. You can forge an empowering bond among people who are at peace with one another. As an action, you choose a number of willing creatures within 30 feet of you. This can include yourself, equal to your proficiency bonus. You create a magical bond among them for 10 minutes or until you use this feature again. While any bonded creature is within 30 feet of another, the creature can roll a d4 and add a number rolled to an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw it makes. Each creature can add the d4 no more than once per turn. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. So essentially, it's like blessed that you can use once around, except for it doesn't require concentration, and you could literally cast bless on them as well. So they could so for one of those rolls once around, they could actually add two d4 to it and just get a d4 on everything else. So I, I feel like that's a pretty sweet ability, and also as eventually you're going to be able to do it to up to six people. Very, very helpful. Very, very, uh, you know, just like the, you know, the aid spell you talked about. It could be really clutch. Uh, so next up, we have Channel Divinity, Bomb of Peace. You can use your Channel Divinity to make your very presence a soothing bomb. As an action, you can move up to your speed without provoking opportunity tax. And when you move within five feet of any other creature during this action, you can restore a number of hit points to the creature equal to two die six plus your wisdom modifier. Minimum of one hit point. A creature can receive the healing only once whenever you take this action. So there's just got a couple things going on. You can move. You're not provoking attacks of opportunity. This is all as your action, right? So essentially, you get the dash, right? But in addition to that, anytime you go within five foot of one of your allies, you heal them for two die six plus your wisdom modifier so you can zip all around the battlefield for whatever your movement is and if you happen to be something that has even more movement that's going to be super beneficial healing everybody and then potentially putting yourself out of harm's way um if you have enough movement to do it and you still have your bonus action and your move action so you know i feel like there's gonna be a lot of like versatile ways to use this i would uh i would completely uh agree sixth level we're gonna get protective bond the bond you forge between people helps protect each other. When a creature affected by your emboldening bond feature is about to take damage, a second bonded creature within 30 feet of the first can use its reaction to teleport to an unoccupied space within 5 feet of the first creature. The second creature then takes all the damage instead. So this is incredibly useful for damage mitigation, especially like you know if the, the person who's bonded winds up Know, having been been really low on hit points, somebody else can just you know pop in there and take the hit instead. Yeah, and not it's not only that too. It's also it's a reaction, right? So you, it's a great use of a reaction. It gives you another option. But you, if you think about it, like you you could even do it to yourself. The cleric move to someone that needs your help because you teleport to them. You know, use your soothing bomb when it's your turn and then you can give them some healing and move away uh, after absor- you know, absorbing the, de- the hit for them. But there's a probably a bunch of other cool ways you can use this as well. Like you said, it, it, you know, damage mitigation to someone that's been weakened uh, or, you know, for the barbarian to step in the way of the attack who's raging, um, which is going to, you know, which they're only going to hit half the damage anyway, or maybe someone else that's better suited to take the damage. And then in addition to, to all that, uh, you also get a 30 foot teleport too, right? So you get mobility out of it as well. All, all in all, I think that's a win for this ability. I would agree. And now we come to, you know, the the unfortunate disappointment ability. Uh, because it's eighth level, we're talking about cleric. Potent spellcasting. You add your wisdom modifier to the damage you deal with any cleric cantrip. Yeah, we we've we've talked to death about how disappointing the eighth level cleric abilities typically are. They're not fun, they're not flavorful. They're blasé and boring. They're not bad. They're just boring, right? (laughs) So expansive bond at 17th level. The benefit of your emboldening bond and protective bond features now work when the creatures are within 60 feet of each other. Moreover, when a creature uses protective bond that takes someone else's damage, the creature has resistance to that damage. All right, so that's cool. We increase the range. 
Downside is it's not as useful for the barbarian as it used to be. I mean, it's not any less useful. Uh, it's just that like the before, like the benefit of using the barbarian as a shield is you get resistance with the rage. But that being said, like if it's a damage sleep that they're not resistant to, then, you know, this is just a blanket resistance. So all the damage it doesn't doesn't matter the source of the attack. So that part is really cool. Again, like I'm sure there's a bunch of like really cool combos you can can do with with these bond features i would agree you know 17th level cleric abilities are are pretty potent you know because we're talking about end of game abilities and i'm generally happy with you know this one and, and all of them for the most part uh so yeah so check it out it might be a little underpowered for 17th level like it's it's not bad right but also you know in, in comparison probably if we look at some of the other 17th level abilities we might find ourselves underwhelmed but all in all you know what what's the chances you're gonna get the 17th level and get to play at that level anyway of uh, the rest of this uh this domain is a lot of fun and i i think it's a great great um subclass if you want to be buffing the party and kind of mitigating the damage for the party and that's just one of the things clerics do anyway i would agree you know it's a it's an it's a second rate healer because you know it's not life domain uh but yeah. it's great it's great if you honestly are looking to take D&D into a new direction and be like, look, I want to make the, the character who cares about peace and, you know, doing things. So, boom, this guy works. So if you want another take on a subclass from Tasha's Cauldron to of everything from us, then you can check out this video up here. Uh, Bard 5e subclasses, College of Eloquence. If you'd like to support Nerdarchy in another way, why not support us over on Patreon? As a thank you, you receive 5e monthly content for players and DMs alike, a chance to game with us, and more. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.